find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to you. have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron. Coming at you from Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm sorry, I'm still catching my breath after that last Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, but uh, go check that. We had Joe Dombrowski on there talking uh, New Japan Wrestling uh, with us. And, and just you know, talking wrestling in general. Have some fun with that. Uh, at WrestlingMayhemShow.com uh, But with me, uh, as always, is my compatriot in indie wrestling. He's a commentator down in nwa inspire pro in well he's in san antonio texas but they're uh, they, they're around there the promotion's in austin texas he's aiming he's at aiming too please how you doing sir i'm doing fantastic sir john uh i'm excited i i would encourage people i mean so i mentioned it before but go check out that wrestling man I, I was thoroughly entertained with that uh, your discussions with the friend of the indie man show joe Dombrowski. Uh, we need to have them on more to talk Japanese wrestling. <laughs> Apparently, we do. Especially, we need to have me and him on to talk Japanese wrestling because there's finally someone I can talk Japanese wrestling. We about. already went long with that show. Could you imagine if I just let you two go at it about Japanese yeah, pro no, wrestling? We would have in depth, in depth, pointless discussions that people probably wouldn't. Well, you know what? You and him are going to be on this show for next week. That's true. Um, and I don't know who you booked for the other end of that conversation. So maybe, maybe we'll get into J- New Japan. I think it'll be very appropriate there. I'm sure we will. But that's sure for some other time. This is, of course, your Indie Mayhem show. We do have a guest that we'll get to here in a moment. But, of course, please go check out. You heard Basic Sickness at the beginning of the show. Check out his music at basicsickness.com. Free videos and uh, music there. Uh, representing the Steel City, of course. Uh, please check out all of our shows. We got so many going on at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We got this. We got the regular one. Uh, we have uh, Midweek Mayhem. Or midweek. I'm sorry, the Midweek War, where they're talking about NXT and whatever shows happen to be on until the new year, I guess, uh, before Impact comes back. Uh, Raw wrap ups. The Wrestling Game Show. We got. So, uh, I think it's the 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 watch parties are are insane lately. We watched the worst table <laughs> match I think I've ever seen involving Shane Douglas in the wall. Um, oh no, there's got to be worse. Oh, I'm sure there's worse, but that was it's the worst <laughs> I've seen. Uh, you can also drop us a line, talk about some indie wrestling at good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or uh, the hotline at 412 206 WMS0. Hit us up on Twitter at Mayhem Show and Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook and Google. Plus. Um, did I mention subscribe? iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, all those places, audio, video formats. Share it with your friends. So let's get into it. Of course, uh, you know, I do a bit of production around here in Pittsburgh. One of the groups, one of my favorite groups to work for. Okay, I work for two groups, but <laughs> I've worked for a couple other. Uh, but no, in your top, in your top two, <laughs> in my top two of the two groups that I work with on a regular basis, uh, this is one of them. Uh, it's the Reggae Wrestling Alliance, and I just saw this guy this past Saturday. He is the uh, officially color commentator over there at Renegade Wrestling Alliance. He is with perfect attendance. This guy, it is Church. He's at Ring Rev Church on the Twitters. How you doing tonight, sir? Oh, I'm doing all right. Uh, how's uh, how's everything going in in uh, WMS land? There, <laughs> it's so. fine. I think you got a little glimpse of that in between shows. There, you kind of <laughs> got dropped into the hellstorm of yelling and telling Eamon to get a job. Uh, or whatever the heck was going on there. So there are many jobs. We can cover that in the intro. <laughs> yes, we there did. Was, I guess we job, did. There was there was man boobs. There was just there was just chaos. Yeah, that's you, all I know. You got it's just some, chaos. You got some flashing. I mean, that's how we do it around here. By the way, I, I like that. I, I I finally see where the bragging rights chair resides when it's not at a show. Now so. <laughs> sits right there. Yep, sits in the corner. That's uh, in case the nephews show up. Um, I have to sit him in the corner and make him face the wall. This is, and I don't know, we're getting kind of uh, outside. Uh, I don't know. I'll show you this on the video. I have a uh, Armageddon chair. Oh, nice. There you go. I'm sitting on Batista's face every week. So <laughs> while, we're, while we're on that, yes, we're those kinds of fans. Um, I did not pay for that chair. <laughs> <laughs> my friends in the right places that hooked me up so um 
But, All right. I, well, I paid for that chair. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> That's why that chair goes with me every no, show. Noticing how much wasn't there one show? I, we, we don't even get into too much here, but isn't there one show where somebody threatened to grab it to use it? Yes. Yeah. So I, I don't remember what show it was, but yes, absolutely. I, when I saw that going down, I thought like I was like, he's not going to let them do it, or he's going to cry. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> If I remember correctly, and, and this is all I can remember of exactly what show it was, it was Jock Samson. Mm-hmm. That and, makes sense. And where he decided to, to – where he was going to run with it or whatever, I have no idea. And I immediately said, uh, no. <laughs> no, you will not. No, no you will not. No. Well, no. of course, uh, uh, you know, you've been uh, uh, commentating for uh, how many years here with uh, – I can't – how long is – I guess we're coming up on the sixth year. Yeah, six like, years. Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and you've been there since day one. Since day one, since show one. I uh, <laughs> the 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 whole story started when I uh, used to do a radio show. Actually, um, myself, uh, CJ Sensation, uh, uh-huh. DJ Bruiser, or whatever in the whatever in the hell his fat ass name is, and. Uh, <laughs> One of the production guys, uh, Mike, Mad Mike, uh, Madness, we always called him. Um, we used to do a little radio show on AM radio, a study union town. Um, I'm not going to give them a shout out because they canceled our show, so fuck them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> during that time frame, um, we had all become friends with uh, Derek, Dr. Phil Bad. Mm-hmm. And. He came in the show, or he, yeah, he came into the studio one night. Decided that he was going to start promoting the RWA, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and he needed somebody to do uh, commentary. And so he got DJ Fatass and myself to go ahead and uh, start doing commentary. And sure enough, show one January, and I don't even know what five, six years ago. So it's, do the math for me. We're coming up on Uprising 7, so I guess that would be six completed years. Yes. So six completed years as of in January of 2015, which would put us, what, January of 2009 is whenever I first started with RWA. And I have been there for every single show since, whether it be in West Newton, whether it be in Cal U, whether it be in some BFE little town that nobody really cared about. Whatever. was it? I was there. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um tremendous so 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 you, you had this opportunity we'll talk about uh, a little bit more about your experience with uh, the rwa uh over the years now uh but what uh, you know what got you into pro wrestling to begin with <laughs> my parents my mother actually. oh nice she, she now absolutely hates it and she can't stand it and she wishes that she would have never gotten me involved with it <laughs> but I remember my first memory going back as a child. You know, you know, you know how as a child you always had that first memory of, you know, riding a bike for the first time or whatever the first thing that you can remember is. Mm-hmm. The first thing that I can remember going all the way back through my childhood is sitting at my mother's friend's house watching WrestleMania three live and watching Hillbilly Jim and two midgets against King Kong Bundy and two midgets. <laughs> that is my first memory of wrestling. And it has been nonstop ever since. And I, I want midgets in indie <laughs> wrestling, damn it. And I, have, I fought for this. This is, this is something from my childhood, and nobody will give it to me. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. So you, you haven't so – they've never had midget wrestling at, at RWA? No. Wow. And I have I have bitched and moaned and groaned and complained and cajoled and, and done everything that I could possibly think of. I've thrown chairs. I've thrown <laughs> everything that I can possibly pick up. I have a bad back, so I don't pick up much. But whenever I do pick things up, I throw them at Derek, and I tell him, feel bad, get me midgets. I need midgets. And no midgets. You know, you know I, I think I'm going to join you in this crusade. I, I need people to join my crusade for this. Because I mean, Midgets in RWA. You, the only midget that we have runs the sound uh, <laughs> for the music. Okay? And then, the only reason he's midgets is because he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> that would be the uh, wonderful uh, Hot Wheels that joins us on the Wrestling Mayhem show and on here from time to time for those wondering. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Aaron. He's in the chat. How you doing? 
How you doing? <laughs> this is the wonderful. This is the camaraderie that you can expect from RWA. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. By the way, like it's it's this for the two to three hours that we're there setting up. Um, it, it's pretty pretty fantastic. Um, so, wow. Wow, I, I'm stuck on the midgets. I, I know I feel bad because I've I've experienced so many midgets in the meantime. Uh, and this is wrong. And see, I'm glad that you are in the same old school mentality as me and calling them midgets. I understand that's not PC. It's midget wrestling. I'm not PC. I don't. Okay, if, listen. If, I don't know if you're know aware of this. Fact, I'm not PC, but it's midgets. They're I, midgets. I don't They're know if you're aware of this, but I I, I actually average. had a run in with Puppet. All right. On on the same show. So so there's a history. They don't mind you call whatever. There's a history. I think he was drunk at the time, so he 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 got on the whole midget use. Um, But (laughs) you will enjoy this interview. I may dig it up just for you. Um, But no, I'm with you on that. Even like the the podunk crappy thing that I didn't even get paid for uh, that that happened over here had midget wrestling, you know, um, and a fake Doink the Clown, you know. I, I, I mean, I, I'm with you on this. If there's one thing missing for, I mean, you know how much I campaign for Super Oprah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, we, we'll, we'll get behind you on this. We'll get social media on this. Um, All right. I'm, I'm down for that. <laughs> I, I don't know what the source of, of midget's wrestling finding is but uh we'll, we'll figure out what that is and, and it's the internet it's the, you it, find it is the internet, the internet. There, i mean come on now there is that there is that but <laughs> <laughs> well obviously other than uh midget wrestling uh you've seen a lot over the six years of the uh, renegade wrestling alliance um um <laughs> So some things you can say, some things you can't say, some things you can complain about. I'm sure, uh, but it's the ups and downs, you know. I, I mean, this is definitely a group that. Um, uh, so no, I, I think, uh, you know, I got to see RWA a little bit before it was RWA. You know, uh, you know, like you, I got to know Feel Bad and all those guys uh, from going to the IWC shows previously, um, and and it's definitely come a very long way. Even since, oh my God. E- yes. even since the first time I experienced R- RWA as RWA was somewhere around 2010. Okay. Uh, I think it was the last show that had Sterling James Keenan. Now the Corey Graves, of course, in WWE, who's, who's, who's going to be popping up on NXT this week. Um, so, so what are the most memorable things? You know, usually I ask what's the best <laughs> and worst in, in indie wrestling for you. But what is the, what are the craziest things you've seen? Or, or, or can you speak a little bit to that development you've seen in this over the years? Oh, wow. Because you're like the uh, person to ask about that. <laughs> Did you see you? You've my been there at the table god. watching it the entire time. Oh my god! I mean, it, it is. I you know, it, everybody online gives you know me and feel bad and RWA in general a ton of shit. Of course, you know, saying that they're that we're we're horrible and that we're you know second rate and we're whatever. You know, it, they can say whatever they want to say. The bottom line is, Derek, feel bad, whatever you want to call him has been here for six years, okay? The fact is we went from renting a ring from southern West Virginia where the ring ropes were just nylon rope, okay? Where I watched Lord Zoltan bounce off the ropes so many times that his back started bleeding because that's what it was. It was just rope. That's it. There wasn't it wasn't steel cable wrapped in wrapped in plastic or wrapped in rubber. None of that. It was rope, literal rope, and it was cutting his back open so much. But I watched going from that to where we are at now, to where we have people like Sanjay Dutt coming in, we have Matt Hardy coming in, and we have you know uh, there's other people. We we've had Missy Hyatt. Okay, now that's nothing to brag about because everybody in pro wrestling has had Missy Hyde at one point or another. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, we've had shark boy. We we've had so many people. We've had Larry Zabisco there. We've had honky tonk man. I heard the honky tonk man got mentioned earlier. And let me just tell you, I have a story about the honky tonk man. Oh, I'm sure it's not about donating uh, his hair to charity. Is it? No, 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 no. It's not about, it's not about charity per se. It's about his charity. That son of a bitch owes me 30 bucks. Okay. 
he shows up at the arena, walks backstage, says hi, shakes hands, you know, all the whole nine yards. He's sitting back there, and he looks at me. Above all people, I me, I have no idea. I'm just lucky enough, I guess. And he says, "Hey, man, is there any place?" And I'm not going to try to do the accent, so don't don't anticipate that. He says, "Hey, man, is there any place that you can buy me some beer?" And I said. I'm sure there's probably some kind of beer distributor around here somewhere. And he's like, good, go get me a 30 pack of beer. So I drive up the road and I get him a 30 pack of bud, (laughs) bring it back. He starts drinking it. He's like, I'll hit you up after, uh, half the, uh, the intermission. Once I sell some of my gimmicks and I'll give you your money back. Cool. No problem. Intermission happens. He goes and does his thing. Well, of course, I can't go backstage right after intermission because I'm sitting at the commentary table. Mm -hmm. So I do the rest of the show. He's on last. He goes out. He does his thing. He sings. He, you know, dances and does his whole little gimmick. He goes backstage. I finish up doing my thing on commentary. I go back to find Honky. Honky has already left. Oh, geez. Mm. He fucking skipped out on 30 bucks for beer. (laughs) <laughs> okay, the honky tonk man owes me thirty bucks for beer, and damn it, honky, I want it. <laughs> I'm calling honky tonk man out. I've been told that he's, you know, whenever he goes to Comic Con, one of my friends keeps telling me, "Oh, honky's going to be a Comic Con. Honky's going to be a, at Steel City Con." Well, guess what? I'm going to show up at Steel City Con one day, and I'm going to be like, "You owe me fucking thirty bucks plus interest over the past five years." <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, wow. Uh, so, can I get Red Bull to sponsor this? By the way, because like they're my fucking favorite thing in the world, and <laughs> you'll see me with one of these all the time. <laughs> Just saying. So, of course, you get like I say, you've been around for a while, um, and 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 it's definitely you know, I don't know, maybe maybe honky tonk's the worst part there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, there's been much 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 worse well it's indie wrestling you know and 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 i and i don't know what the process is how how a promoter finds the talent how the talent finds them um obviously you know a lot of uh uh, greener talent you know especially in years past uh i I think it's popped up at rwa uh it's come a long way to get to where it's at right now um but you always seem to make the best of a of of a dire situation one i you know um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> be it, be it um, uh, one of our favorites I know uh, LB is a big fan even though I don't think we, he's ever actually seen him wrestle uh, of Dan Sandwich that we heard about <laughs> years ago early on I think this is pre-RWA we heard about this guy um, and, and, and one of the favorites I think I made a super cut of all the names you gave Dan Sandwich during a match <laughs> yeah uh, Dan Sandwich was probably one of the best ones that I had. Um, I, I've called I called him everything from you know Dan Ham on Rye to Dan Hold the Mayo to Dan BLT to Dan Meatball Hoagie. I think even at one point, like it just whatever kind of sandwich came to mind. Every time I said his name was a different last name instead of Sandwich. So mm-hmm. I would replace sandwich with whatever came to mind, and it was you know Dan BLT goes for the the drop toe hold, Dan uh, ham on rye with clothesline, you know it, whatever, whatever he did, I just came up with a different sandwich to put for his last name. That was probably one of the best things that I think I've I've done in quite some time. I I personally enjoyed that. <laughs> I love it when there's somebody easy to make fun of for their <laughs> name, because let's face it. In indie wrestling is indie wrestling. There are, and as you said, there there are some greener guys. There's some, you know, some younger talent that might not be as experienced and might not be able to have that great of an entertaining match. That's still entertaining, but it's not tremendously entertaining. Mm-hmm. That's whenever I start to entertain myself, <laughs> and I start I start going into you know doing a play on names and. Sometimes it sticks and, you know, when they become better and they progress on in RWA and wherever else, you know, I, I keep on going with it. Um, 
that one is one of the ones that comes to mind. Um, Takahashi was another one. Um, I called him Teriyaki most of the time. That was a good one. Um, Serafini is another one. She's a you know somewhat of a friend of mine. I'm I'm not gonna I'm breaking some rules here. Um, Sarah and I have talked countless number of times backstage and you know on on the uh, on the Facebooks and uh, I'm gonna add S's to shit too just so you know on the <laughs> Facebooks and uh, you know it, it, I called her Shirley Feeney. Now with I'm only 33, but I know the joke. She, however, was born about 10 years after me. <laughs> she got none of the jokes that I was making about her and about her name because I was calling her Shirley Phoebe. And so she didn't get any of the Laverne and Shirley references whatsoever. It was, you know, I, I used to call her finishing move the Schlemiel Schlemazel Haas and Pfeff Incorporated. I used to say that her and Laverne needed to go back to Shots Brewery, um, <laughs> that her boyfriend uh, Squiggy was getting going to get mad at her if she didn't get back home soon. Like, just whatever. And she never got a single one of those jokes. And it, it's just an age difference thing. But it, it is what it is. It's, it's one of those things that's just, you know, it, it, whatever comes to mind is what comes out of my mouth, usually. There's, that's backfired on me, too, though. Oh yeah, we did. We did talk talk about uh, a little bit of that before the show. Um, sometimes, sometimes you go overboard, uh, but I, I know it's all in good fun and everything. Yeah. Um, I I have always said that if I go overboard, and and most of the guys backstage know this by now. Yeah. Maybe there might not be some, you know, one or two of the newer guys that might not realize it or whatnot, but. Most everybody backstage knows this about me by now. I go full out balls to the wall. Whatever comes to mind is what I say. Now, if there is something that you have a problem with as far as the performer goes, mm -hmm. that you don't want me to say. Um, case in point, uh, Jimmy Nuts. Yeah. This was a, a, maybe around your time, maybe a little bit before your time, Sorg, but Jimmy Nuts absolutely hated my guts because <laughs> it, it, okay, just going based off the name, where do you think I went with every single joke that I could possibly make? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he came to me one day and he was like, "Charge, listen." He's like, "You know, I, I'm making videos for um, you know, tryouts and I'm making videos for kids and I'm, I want to show my parents this kind of stuff and I can't do that with you making these kind of jokes." And I said, okay, fair enough, understandable, no problem, I'll stop. And at that point, I stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you as a performer come to me and tell me about it, I'll, I, I will work with you, I will do whatever I need to do in order to make sure that it, it is an entertaining show and that I don't do what you don't want me to do. Mm -hmm. There are people, however, that don't realize that, and they run their mouth in the back, and then I hear about it, and that just causes me to say it twice as much on the next show. <laughs> what can I say? It is what it is. But at the end of the day, we're you know we all work together, and you know I, there was there's been some jokes made about Ryan Mitchell um, that. You know, he looks like a certain somebody who's now retired from the Fed, and um, we're not going to go into that. But I was making jokes about that, and he was like, "You got to stop that." You know, I can't. No, just stop. And I said, "Okay, no problem." And I stopped. And it, we've not had a problem with the commentary ever since. So it, it's just a matter of, you know, like I said, you come to me, you tell me what's going on. So you know, I. I don't don't mention this, or go mm -hmm. ahead and mention this, but don't bring that up. Mm -hmm. Okay, no. Yeah, and you uh, uh, for a while, for, for the longest time, at least since I've been around, uh, you have a pretty good partnership with uh, uh, Michael Doc Doherty. We talked to him uh, about roughly fifteen episodes ago here on the Indie Mayhem show, as well. Um, can you talk a little bit about your, your relationship with him on the mic? Well, to talk about the relationship that Doc and I have on the mic is needs to be prefaced with the fact that Doc and I have known each other for going on 15 years now. 
Um, you know, it, it is something that we have we have been friends longer than RWA has been around. <laughs> um, you know, Doc didn't first start off in RWA though. Um, you know, it was me and, and DJ Fatfuck that originally started. And um, I can't remember his name to save my life. And that's the only thing that pops into my head. So I'm just going to roll with it. <laughs> Eventually he became one of our commissioners. And it, it, complete side note, every one of our commissioners have weighed well over 350 pounds. Okay. okay. Every single one of them. Okay. And I need to be the one that, that is under 300 pounds. Okay. And I've been lobbying for this too. And that, that hasn't happened. That's a side note. That's another story. For I, was, time. I always wondered about this because you always lobby to be commissioner, but I've noticed no storyline about a new commissioner in like the last year. Is this? That's, be- that's because Feel Bad is an egotistical maniac, and <laughs> he loves the spotlight. One, two, he loves to just be like, "Oh, it's all about me. It's all about Feel Bad." And three, he knows that if he gives me a live mic, that people are going to get really pissed off. <laughs> Get over it. Mm-hmm. He's a he's he's a fan favorite. He's a good guy. I'm an asshole. People hate me. They boo me. You've heard it, Sorg. I they... thought the guy was going to fight you at the commentary table last <laughs> show. I, I, I the, you noticed you had a security guy posted uh, by you right after that. Yes, that, that was my doing. Uh, <laughs> I, well, I had assumed as much, and I honestly I figured it was more so because of the fact that him running his mouth was coming across into the commentary more so than the fact that he wanted to kick my ass. <laughs> it was a little bit of both, to be honest. Um, oh, well, I, I appreciate that. Sir. I know Thank how they get. I, I, I know how they get there <laughs> at, at West Dune. We've spoken about that several times, especially when uh, uh, Ryan Ryan Edmonds was really big and, and, and really just getting in everybody's face as he came to the ring. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I know how they can get. I, I know wrestling is on a whole different level uh, in, in a place like that with that crowd. Um, that's why I love the place so much, you know, and especially, oh, yeah. especially you, you, you're one of the, one of the people that definitely gets that. You, I mean, you call them river dirt every month. Uh, <laughs> I, I see you, you, you and Mitch are, uh, geez, there's, I keep getting the rhymes mixed up. You and Edmonds are, were, are always really big about, you know, on the, on the Facebook and really taking it, you know, out, outside of, uh, you know, you know, keep keeping, I don't know if you want to call it the story, the, the, the vibe going outside of, uh, uh, of what happens there once a month in that gymnasium. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and in all honesty, you know, I, and I've said this before, I can take one thing and post it on my Facebook, you know, church's Facebook and, in an instant, it will create chaos amongst the river dirt, mm-hmm. and I will even have some of the the guys or girls in the back join in, and it just it just turns into a giant snowball. Honestly, the picture that I took of Doc uh, tied up at the last show, um, courtesy of the Bad Boys Club and uh, Jesse Bell. They decided to tie Doc up as a yeah, Christmas tree, and uh, you know it, it. It instantly got so many people angry because I, you know, I was making fun of Doc. I put up the, you know, the the fact that Doc got tied up, and then I got to do commentary by myself basically for the first half of the show. I like to say I styled it, and uh, it, it is what it is, but. It, there was so many people that got so upset over that picture and it was all in good fun. Mm-hmm. It's all in good fun. Everything that I do and everything that I say is all for the entertainment purposes. Now, granted, there might be a little times where I go a little too far and I'll even admit that. But for the most part, guess what? The fact is it's all about entertainment. And as long as I can do what I'm supposed to do, which is make sure that you get entertained one way or another, that's what I'm going to do. Awesome. So tell me, uh, we usually like to end off with this. I think we touched on a little bit both sides of this uh, already. But um, can you tell me one thing or one broad thing, uh, one thing that's the uh, uh, best experience or the, the best thing about working in indie wrestling in the capacity you have and the worst thing uh, since you've started working with this? <laughs> oh, other, uh, other than Honky Tonk owing you 30 bucks. Well, yeah, that's a whole other story. Yeah, it's yeah. Just Honky Tonk owes me 30 bucks, and that's the end of the deal on that. Now, I mean, honestly, the best thing about working in indie wrestling is the the fact of, you know, the people that you meet. Because 
in my six years, I have met Missy Hyatt, Shark Boy, Larry Zabisco, Honky Tonk Man, Shane Douglas, uh, Matt Hardy, Sanjay Dutt, uh, Mickey Knuckles. Was hell, that yeah. You know, she was the uh, Moose Knuckles. I, like that's what I was calling her last or Saturday. Moose Knuckles. I got to meet her. So I mean, like I I have met so many people. I've got to do commentary with Larry Zabisco, which oh, eventually. It, it, the the commentary with Larry Zbysko, all it all it turned into was me talking to Larry Zbysko, and Larry Zbysko pointing out the fact that there was a match going on in the ring, and I said, "I don't care. I'm talking to you." <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's where it went. It was me and Larry having a one on one discussion while there was something going on in the ring. So you know that to me, that's some of the best stuff. Um, also, to seeing the talent perform. Um, you know, up close and personal, you, you figure, you know, you go to a WWE event and you got, you know, 10,000 people, 5,000 people, 8,000 people, whatever, you know, wherever the event's being held at. Indie wrestling, it's 200, 300, 400, 500 people, maybe maximum. And you're, you're much closer and the fans have better interaction with that. And that kind of, you know, I was, I'll be perfectly honest before 2009, I was not into indie wrestling at all. I wasn't. Hmm. And once I started in it, now I'm hooked. And that's the thing. Once you get into it, once you realize what it is, then you get hooked and then you continue on with it. Some of the worst stuff, however, is seeing some of the people that perform. (laughs) (laughs) I, you know, not everybody can be a performer. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can be a main inventor. Not everybody can be a wrestler, period. And I'm not going to say sports entertainer. I'm going to say a wrestler because that's what it is. The fact of the matter is people need to have that bubble burst. I know that I would never be able to do a rest- be a wrestler. I got a concussion from a wrestler. And we can talk about that if you want to, but the fact of the matter is I got a concussion. I went in there completely untrained. Mm-hmm. I was in a match for 30 minutes and oh, I got the ever loving shit kicked out of me. 30 minutes. Part of it, yeah. Part of it was because of my commentary. Part of it was because it was supposed to happen. Yeah. Regardless, 30 minutes. I got the living shit kicked out of me by two people. Wow. And Mitchell. And Calvin McGrath. Wait a minute. Did, was I there for this? It was during the... I don't know if we can like truly talk about it. It was during the, the movie thing. Oh. It, was before, it was before the movie thing went off and did its own thing. They, they did a pre-taping to kind of sell to studios and whatnot at RWA. Yeah. I was a zombie. Doc was a zombie. Piv was a zombie. And there was bunch of other people that were zombies and i'm going around the entire day telling everybody shane douglas ryan calvin anybody that would listen i am not trained i've never been inside of a wrestling ring i am not trained don't worry we'll take care of you okay who did they send out first this guy right here (laughs) Me and Doc and and Piv go out first. The three people that are not trained, they sent us out first. And like I said, part of it was because it was supposed to happen. Part of it was because of my commentary. But Ryan Mitchell beat the ever-loving piss out of me. Calvin McGrath beat the ever-loving piss out of me. Calvin McGrath threw me into the corner, stomach first, then proceeded to... Uh, give me shoulder tackles into the small of my back and then pulled me out and gave me the Randy Orton style backbreaker. Ooh. I have three herniated discs in the small of my back. <laughs> like you already had that or you got it from then? No, I had that prior to that. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Calvin McGrath climbed up to the top rope. I am standing on the floor next to Doc, being held by Ryan Mitchell. 
and Calvin McGrath jumps off the top rope and lands on top of my head, chest first, compresses my spine down, oh. causes me to pass out instantly, and I wake up when the back of my head hits the floor. <sighs> that gave me the concussion, by the way. <laughs> so I know what it's like to be in there somewhat. Yeah, yeah. You don't see my ass getting back in there again. No. <laughs> no. Trained or not, I'm not getting I'm not getting back in there. I know this. There are some people that would not be able to do I think the things that I was able to do not being trained who are trained and they're in wrestling and people don't tell them that they should not be there now. They should either go get more training or pursue something else in their dream. And mm -hmm. I get it. You don't want to be the person that tells them you suck at your dream. I, tell, let me tell them. I will tell them you suck at your dream. Go find another dream. You can be the heavy. Yeah, I don't as, care. Yeah. As long as somebody's got my back, I don't care. Because I, I can defend myself to a degree, Yeah. but I'm not going to be able to defend myself all that well. Yeah, yeah. Tell them, tell them to, you know, let me tell them you suck because I do tell them you suck and get out of the ring. Go, go somewhere other than in the ring because you don't belong there. And unfortunately it's, it's, it is what it is. It happens. Nothing I can do. So right. that, I'd say that's probably some of the worst parts of, of indie wrestling. <laughs> Church, uh, it's been an awesome. Uh, this is everything and more that I expected us to be of us getting together <laughs> on the mic here. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that I lived up to expectations because <clears throat> I'll be honest, the the build up as soon as I saw where it said the most controversial man on the mic in RWA, I was like, oh, well, I get a new title. You you also and, had a, you also I, I'm, I'm putting you on that bar with Jock Sampson that told all the promoters that they're doing it wrong. Uh, early in the show's hits, like episode five, right? Um, and we're at 49 here. Yeah. And uh, you are also the last uh, individual guest for the year. We're having something different next week, uh, breaking a little bit of format. Uh, so uh, tell the people uh, if they want to, uh, one, uh, um, respond to this interview <laughs> on social media, <laughs> etc. cetera, uh, where can they find you? Um, honestly, the, the two main places is the Facebooks and the Twitters, uh, facebook.com slash ring church, twitter.com slash ring church. Uh, of course, every once a month at, uh, RWA, you can find me there and people will come up to me and tell me, I don't like you. You suck, you know, fuck you. And, and every other thing that they could possibly think of. And it is what it is, whatever it happens. But you know, if you want to say something to my face, I will gladly take what you have to say to my face and then retort back. So anticipate that. If you want to hit me up on Facebook, by all means, hit me up on Facebook and tell me what you think of me. But be assured that I'm going to retort back. And it, it is what it is. It just be prepared. Um, but other than that, uh, right now I am exclusive to RWA. Um, I am throwing it out there right now. And feel bad, Dude, fuck you. You don't know about this, but <laughs> I'm going. To, I, it's an exclusive for the Indie Mayhem show oh, only. There All you right? go. Exclusive. The fact of the matter is, um, I would like to do other things. I would like to go out there and do other promotions. Um, mm -hmm. I'm exclusive to RWA and Sorgatron for commentary. But if you want me to show up and be a ring announcer, or if you want me to show up and be a manager, or if you just want me to show up and create chaos, I'm good with that. <laughs> um, you know, you can hit me up on Facebook, facebook.com slash ringrevchurch, or twitter.com slash ringrevchurch, either one of the two, and I will respond back. And, you know, if, if everything goes right, I will be there. I am not going to cancel on anything for RWA, because I... I am loyal to Derek and feel bad and everybody there because they got me into this business. Um, as a child, this is something that I've always wanted to do. Actually, I wanted to be a wrestler, but because of health problems and other things, that's not going to happen. So this is the next best thing that I got. So, you know, I, I will be exclusive to them. Um, I, I, you know, they come first. 
Um, but anybody that wants me to show up at another promotion, I absolutely I will be more than happy to do so. Just can't interfere with the RWA schedule. So awesome, awesome, and they're really good about posting that too. They already have like all of 2015 on the site. Yeah. So uh, really, really good to see see that. So awesome. Thank you, uh, Church. Go check them out. Uh, 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 rwalive.com, pittsburghwrestling.com to check out the uh, DVDs and digital downloads of the RWA wrap-up he does every month with uh, Doc telling you what's what's important, what's going on uh, with uh, uh, RWA as well. And so with that, uh, Eamon, we're going to talk about a little bit more indie wrestling. Yeah, that's right. So it's time to talk about some of the uh, other happenings going on in the independent wrestling world. Uh, I do want to bring up that uh, I did get the chance to check out the uh, Chikara Pro uh, big eye pay-per-view this past weekend, the end of uh, Season 14 for Chikara Pro. Uh, uh, really, really cool stuff, I thought. Uh, they, they did it out of the old ECW arena, which is now the 2300 arena. Uh, the presentation on this was really good, I thought. Uh, uh, it looked... Uh, the, the setup they had, it looked like a really like big show. Um, it, it looked extremely professional, and, and I... The stream wise as well, I, I really had no problem with the stream. So, it looked like a, a big success uh, all throughout that part for uh, Chikara. Uh, a lot of cool stuff happened on that show. Uh, the uh, the biggest thing, I guess, being the uh, the uh, end of uh, Ducalion, which is the big uh, uh, monster uh, that has uh, been running the flood, which has been looking to destroy Chikara. Uh, he was I uh, assumedly killed uh, uh, after his uh, steel cage match with Icarus. Uh, the only second ever steel cage match in the history of Jakara, so definitely a bit, very big deal there. Um, I also encourage anybody who uh, wants to go seek out the uh, show, since it's, you can get the replay on Smart Mark Video, uh, is to check out the uh, Campionas de Pareja's uh, tag title match between uh, the, the Throwbacks and the Devastation Corporation. Really, really phenomenal stuff, I thought. Um, I think people, especially Jakara this year, because they've been going through a bit of a transitional period, have kind of crapped a bit on the wrestling aspect of Chikara because they think it's just a, an amalgamation of characters and, and over, you know, complex storylines. But this was a really phenomenal match. Uh, the, uh, the Devastation Corporation, I think, is definitely two guys you should really, really watch. Uh, the things that they could do is really amazing. Um, and definitely also the throwbacks. Uh, uh, I, maybe it's just because I recently worked with him at Inspire, but Dasher Hatfield's like becoming one of my favorites, um, wrestling wise. He's he's a phenomenally underrated wrestler, I think. Uh, as the same goes for uh, Mr. Touchdown. Um, so yeah, there's really cool stuff there. There's loser leaves Chikara match between Ultimates Black and Delirious. Uh, uh, that was very good. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. They had their Cybernetico, which is their eight on eight elimination match, which is another really fun one. So there's a lot of cool stuff there. So uh, I definitely encourage people to check that out. It's definitely one to uh, to watch. Um, and uh, I know Ring of Honor also had their pay-per-view this uh, past weekend for Final Battle. I didn't get a chance to check that one out. I did, however, hear pretty good things. Uh, overall, uh, They I heard good things about the production. You know, So it seemed like a big success for ROH as well. So, so good to hear mm -hmm. uh, some good stuff happening on that front as well. So, And we got some notes from the chat room, actually, uh, from Tony Garza. Um, from the Ring of Honor show. Hold on, let me get this in front. Oh, yeah, because normally they do Final Battle at um, the uh, Manhattan Center. Yeah. Uh, at the, uh, what is it? Hammerstein. Well, it's the Manhattan Center. It's the... Um, Hammerstein. Hammerstein Ballroom. Yeah. It's just like adjacent, I think. Um, but they did it out of a different venue this time. They did it out of a place called Terminal 5. Yeah. Which is, I guess, kind of like... It looked very underground-esque. It had a, a very cool look to it. At uh, least on... on from the stuff I saw, but apparently, from what Tony was saying, it was really terrible for fans because uh, of uh, uh, you know just the seating arrangement stuff. Apparently, yeah, he says um, uh, there's no seating and there are three levels, so everyone in the second and third and third floor had some uh, trouble with that. Um, and he says, match wise, ACH and the Bucks versus Addiction and Cedric Alexander stole the show. I, I heard really good things about that contest. Right. Uh, Red Dragon versus Time Splitters was amazing. Time Splitters, we were talking about with the New Japan stuff with uh, Joe Dabrowski. Uh, that's Definitely. Alex. So kind of a, a preview to uh, what you could see on uh, Russell Kingdom. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Uh, Adam Cole versus Briscoe was uh, 
also two cool maybe you meant to say so i they, they always bring it on that final battle show and um was it pay-per-view or i pay-per-view i believe it was pay-per-view it was they were going pay-per-view. to pay-per-view around this yeah time. Um, um i i which is an interesting choice i mean i i you know i guess that's a market that you know people are trying to excavate now that's not a thing in wwe and it's and kind of there oh yeah oh they're they're, they're filling the gaps to, mm-hmm. for sure um, because there's plenty of people out there that want to get their wrestling on pay-per-view. Yeah, there, there, there's an entire industry behind it. It's, it's supportable. Um, and, 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 and especially with the ring of honor, you know, wanting to be more, uh, mainstream, mainstream accessible, like they kind of need to. Um, mm-hmm. and I think some people can get by on just the show and the pay-per-views as far as fans go. Of yeah. course, and then the diehards are going to be your ones that are, are buying the, dvds or the streaming service or, or you know the ringside the ringside uh member stuff uh to get that kind of stuff i mean uh, mm-hmm. it, every time i ask uh, uh i know every time i ask joe about was, was this show on they're filming for dvd on this one what's going on it's like oh they're probably for their on-demand service it's like the line which means it's probably the line he's hearing too yeah. um so uh, you know it, it's uh it's different levels of that you know they're not going to be wwe network as far as their streaming stuff but you know, the, like I said, it's going to be the diehards that are really, mm-hmm. really into it. And the diehards are the ones that supported Ring of Honor for all these years with DVD sales. So, That's true, yeah. So why not? Um, but, but hey, this is a perfect time to strike, and so many are right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, it's great to see. So uh, awesome. good to see that. Really also, uh, on the Chikara front, I should announce the, or, or talk about the fact that they made some big announcements. Uh, they're actually coming back to uh, Philadelphia to the – 2300 arena january 25th i believe and if i'm if i have that day correct yes that's the same day as the royal rumble in the same town as the royal rumble Mm. Uh, they'll be doing an afternoon show obviously uh they won't be directly competing at the same time as the royal rumble but i think that's actually a a really cool idea because there's going to be tons of people in that town for the weekend because the rumble really just feels like a you know a a bigger pay-per-view you know that people kind of flock towards. So I think that'll be cool, you know, see if that's a, a success for them, sort of excavate that audience. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, that'll be really cool to see. They also announced that, um, you know, among the many places that they'll be uh, touring, the Midwest, Carolinas, uh, stuff like that, they will also be going to uh, uh, good old England. Uh, they were making their debuts in England. I believe they have a four-day uh, weekend of shows uh, in England. Um, uh, in different uh, parts of uh, different parts of England. So if you're a UK fan that wants to see some Shikara, uh, this is your opportunity. So definitely some cool stuff. And I believe King of, they also announced that King of Trios will be coming back. I believe in September. So nice, nice. Um, and of course, like I mentioned, we t- talked a lot about RWA, but they, they they did have a show this weekend. Highlights including Mickey Knuckles taking on Jesse uh, Smothers. Uh, you know, it was the first kind of seeing her. Like I said, I don't have much memory of her from TNA when she had a short stint there with the Knockouts. Um, they also because uh, I know Mickey Knuckles and Jesse Bell have a past history of yeah. teaming back when they were known as uh, Smothers Twisted Daughters. They announced they announced uh, Mickey as or uh, you know actually they did announce that like she was her trainer apparently. Uh, mm. Jesse's trainer. Uh, I can't remember challenge. what I think it was like when they were working for OBW, but they were basically being played off as the um, the illegitimate daughters of Tracy Smothers. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, uh, interesting uh, uh, you know callback. But yeah, I, and I'm, I'm glad you bring. Well, yeah, I heard you enjoyed Mickey. I don't know if you had seen her wrestle before, but she's kind of she's sort of becoming a, a. She was a very influential name in, in independent women's wrestling, and and. She uh, is still, you know, going strong today. And then they push her in TNA as sort of a hardcore wrestler. Hardcore esque. Yeah. She, they, they, yeah, they put her in a bunch of hardcore matches. Well, they, Sadly, I, uh, she had uh, about like a month into her uh, time in TNA, she broke her leg at a, uh, a indie show. So, oh. uh, and her, and her uh, not so long run in TNA. So. Um, and and the, it was good to see her, and also another great match with Sanjay Dutt and Shane Andrews, the rematch from uh, uh, Sanjay winning the Cruiserweight belt. He has the title. He's had it for a couple of shows. He's not in a title match the next show, so it, it's great to see, like 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 uh, Church was talking about, seeing guys like that sticking around and becoming uh, mainstays, at least for a period here with, with RWA. Like I really, I think that really uh, raises the stock for these guys. Um, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, they are the kind of the, you know, they're, they're the little engine that could as far as the 
this. You know, it's taken them a long time. They can't all be as breakout as NWA Inspire Pro. Oh, you brave. know, and I don't know if we'll see an NWA RWA in the future, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> that would be hard. <laughs> That'd be hard. But hey, yeah, we lost our NWA affiliate in Pittsburgh because PWX used to be NWA East, actually. So they're always looking; they're always expanding. Uh, yeah, yeah, you never know. I guess these guys are doing something cool. Um, this was, and I don't—I honestly have no history, and you can—you you don't have any knowledge of these guys. And I showed you a little a clip uh, to see if you did know anything about these. But the uh, the uh, great Akuma and Junhado teaming up. Uh, taking on our, our friends in Generation Dead. I'm just if I click the right thing. There you go, guys, on video. Um, uh, very Japanese, very face painty, uh, and very fun to take on uh, uh, the, the, the Generation Dead team uh, here. But uh, but no, it was it was fun. And again, another couple of guys are going to be coming back uh, for a rematch uh, uh, in, in future months. Awesome. Uh, I mean, this is the kind of talent that's being attracted, and it's really cool to see that. You know, uh, see other indie talent, see a lot of variety, and and RWA has always been good, as I've mentioned before, getting like groups from other areas you know i know a lot have and still come from the the carolinas uh or from uh you know the other side of ohio you know it was great to see irish airborne who is now ohio's for killers uh last month taking on uh you know the generation dead and have just have great great matches uh and mm-hmm. it's really good to see uh them doing that uh and also uh, and other than that uh you know yeah, you know pretty good show uh otherwise uh, a lot of fun fun there so uh, that's uh, uh, Seasons Beating Six is the official title of that show. Um, I, I was telling Church Off Air, which should be up at least a digital download at PittsburghWrestling.com uh, this Wednesday. So by the time you're probably hearing this uh, on the feeds and uh, DVD to follow soon after. So uh, that's what's coming happening in this neck of the woods. Now, coming up, are we, on, are, we, are we on all the past shows? Are we ready for the, the shows coming up? I think so, yeah. Okay, uh, I just want to make sure I want to step in in front of you. Uh, no, look, look, look into the future. <laughs> look into the future. Uh, the, the name of this segment that very, well, very well may change. Ooh, because <laughs> I like that. New new ideas for 20, 2014. Yes. Uh, but winner takes all the big show, big show ender uh, for IWC. Actually, we're running a contest over a Wrestling Mayhem show. Um, uh, uh, so listen to that this week. Uh, but if you leave a, actually, if you leave a iTunes comment for wrestling mayhem show, uh, you got a chance to win all three, uh, of the, uh, previous winner takes all shows. A lot of great guys on there, including Tommy dreamer is on one of them taking on John McChesney, uh, nice. Cole Cabana facade, Matt cross four way ladder match for the uh, super indie uh, title back in 2011, uh, Logan Shulo and Sammy Callahan in the main event a couple of years ago, now both in NXT. And, and I think about the breakout on the TV any day now. Uh, so, so really good stuff, but this weekend they're bringing in Matt Hardy, Back in Pittsburgh once again uh, to take on John McChesney, of course. Friends of the show like Don Castle, RJ City for the heavyweight title, Facade and Andrew Palace for the for the Super Indian a ladder match. DJ Zima, speaking of uh, of uh, TNA talent, taking on Sammy Guevara, um, who's been ripping it up in, in, in IWC all year long, um, and, and other great. Great matches with some upstarts and some others, some some friends of the show, some past friends of the show, Bobby Shields, Jimmy DeMarco, um, and uh, it'll be a fun show. IWC always uh, picks up this one of their biggest shows at the Court Time Sports Center, and it'll be a great. Uh, uh, it's going to be a great year ender as far as professional wrestling goes, I think. So as we head into the holiday, and I head out of town, <laughs> 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 I'll be crossing your time zone, sir, in the coming awesome. weeks, going to California. Awesome. Yeah, um, now I've, you know how we feel. So. I don't know if there's is there any wrestling to be had in the San Francisco and Sacramento area. I don't know. I'm there's sure somebody, there is. Yeah, there's something. Yeah, let me know. I, I'm sure they're not running over the holiday, but <laughs> probably not. But yeah. Uh, but so, you never know. I mean, uh, WWE's WWE's actually doing a ho- holiday house show here, and they have in the past too, like the week after Christmas, like the 27th. Mm. So, eh, you know, you never know. You never know. Anything else coming up uh, we should be aware of, sir? Uh, I do want to mention a, a company down here in Texas that's running an event this weekend that I want to uh, mention. Uh, our good friends at NWA Branded Outlaw Wrestling is holding a show in San Antonio this Saturday, December the 13th. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff on that show. Uh, I, one of the matches I would encourage people to go check out specifically 
would be um, a guy who we've, we've had on the show before, Andy Dalton. He's defending the BOW Cruiserweight Championship in a uh, first-time one-on-one matchup against ACH. Uh, and, nice. you know, I've gotten to see Andy progress, uh, especially he's also uh, the current Inspire Pro Champion. Um, and th- that's going to be a match to see because I, I think, you know, I, they, they've actually wrestled in a tag match once before for Inspire Pro, but never one-on-one. Uh, so this is going to be really cool stuff, I think. Uh, there's a lot of cool uh, uh, NWA talent uh, on that card. Uh, Ray Rowe is going to be the special general manager for the evening, uh, obviously recouping from his injury, uh, but uh, he will be there in attendance. Uh, if you want more information, you can go to find uh, Brandon Allen Wrestling on Facebook. And like I said, their event is Saturday, December 13th uh, in San Antonio at the Woodlawn Gym. So, And, and Brandon Allen is one of those guys that consistently has been producing some really cool stuff. So. I encourage you to go check them out and go support some fellow friends from the NWA. Nice. Nice. And I think that's all the indie wrestling to speak of. <laughs> At least for this week. At, At least, least this, for week. this week. There's always something. Thanks There's a- always something new. Thanks again, uh, Ring Rev Church on the Twitters uh, for that great conversation earlier in the in the show. Also, uh, kind of an extension of this, we had Joe Dombrowski over on Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, number 449. Uh, great conversation about New Japan Pro Wrestling and the upcoming Global Force uh, re- uh, Wrestling uh, branded uh, pay-per-view uh, coming up in January. Oh, man, he sold me on it. He really sold me on that pay-per-view. I'm going to have to put down for that thing. Uh, so looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, we, we got to have him on. Uh, we, like I said, we're expected to have him on for next week's episode for Indie Mayhem Show number 50, closing out the first year in our our, our brand new <laughs> interview <laughs> series here. I can't believe we did, we're doing 50 episodes of this. I can't believe we're there already. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit of a kind of a just an indie wrestling roundtable. You know, they're talking about the state of the business, what's good, what's bad, our experiences, their experiences, and really just kind of have a, a, a hopefully having an open discussion uh, just about indie wrestling. So um, uh, so with that, uh, again, please check us out. We're the Indie Mayhem Show on uh, uh, YouTube, Facebook. I'm sorry, Wrestling Mayhem Show on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to us on on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Follow us on Google uh, a plus on Facebook at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, and uh, with that, Amen. He's at Amen to please doing things, doing stuff, doing, doing stuff, stuff. And things. Uh, you can also because it literally just came out right now as I'm speaking. Uh, you can also buy the latest copy of the NWA Ringside magazine nice. uh, at nwaringside.com. It's the year end wrap up, and it's the first issue. Well, there's stuff written by me inside of it. Check that out. The future award-winning author. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get it in, uh, in print and digital, so go, go right. check that out. Go check that out and support 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 Eamon. Tell him that you bought it because Eamon's in there. Yes, please. <laughs> tell him on the social medias. Tell, tell the folks at NWA Ringside you bought it specifically for me. Actually, don't tell them that because I feel they'll know why. <laughs> but no, definitely awesome uh thanks a lot and, and, and in the meantime go support some indie wrestling get some indie dvds or something for your friends that are into wrestling and expose them all this stuff. Let them know about our podcast. see you guys next time never said i was a gangster or thug when i'm an animal peanut for the taste of the poor sick 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 you know how i act now if you got a problem come and see if i'm a back down wow this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatron media Hi everyone, do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out InsertCoinToBegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, 